Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thanks for coming today to this year's budget message. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to present the last budget message for Baltimore County from a public servant who has made significant contributions and exercised tremendous courage and leadership of Baltimore County for the last 24 years, a public servant who has led in fostering record investments in education, a public servant who has assisted in creating tremendous economic development, bringing thousands of jobs to Baltimore County, a public servant who understands the needs of the community and has been responsible in delivering these services they desire while keeping taxes low. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to present to you our county executive, the Honorable Kevin Kamenetz. Thank you. Now that you've delivered the address, Mr. Jones. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> council Chairman Jones, members of the council, and fellow residents of Baltimore County, this is a somewhat bittersweet moment for me. Tom Petticord, as you will recall, I first walked into these chambers 24 years ago as a young council member in my 30s, single, no kids, a full head of hair, and a bushy mustache. Today, 24 years later, I'm married, the father of two teenage boys, thinning hair. I grew the mustache to look older, and I shaved it to look younger. <laughs> it's been an absolute honor and privilege to serve the more than 830,000 diverse residents who are committed to this place we call home. Over the decades, I've probably met with every single resident at least once, or maybe it feels that way. Each had a story to share a problem to be solved, a direction to be found. I've listened in schools, libraries, churches, community centers, and the input has helped shape our administration's policies and programs. Topics have ranged from potholes to improving animal services, expanding the number of parks and playing fields, and yes, air conditioning our schools. Some topics are specific to a neighborhood, but more often than not, the conversations have a lot in common. Giving our children an education that prepares them for success, creating jobs and economic opportunities, keeping our community safe and healthy, modernizing our schools, and maintaining our public infrastructure enriching our quality of life. We've been through a lot together since I became county executive in December 2010. We came into office when the Great Recession was hitting hard, but we worked hard and we are resilient. No one person can make a county great. So thank you to the members of the county council, to our state delegation, and Maryland's federal elected officials. I know that State's Attorney Schellenberger is here, Sheriff Fisher, uh, Delegate Chairman Lafferty, thank you all as well. When we work together, we get things done for the people we serve. I also want to acknowledge the tremendous partnerships we've built with the leadership and staff of the Baltimore County Public Schools, our library, our community college, the district and circuit courts, and the sheriff's office. I'm particularly proud of our dedicated county employees. They get the job done each and every day. And in recognition of their service, this budget includes a 3% cost of living adjustment effective January.
Over the past four years, the county has funded a total of 10% in cost of living increases for employees, in addition to funding every step and every longevity increase since 2010 with zero furloughs. All of this while strengthening our employee retirement system and providing decent family coverage health benefits. Today, as we submit our fiscal 2019 budget to the County Council, I thank Keith Dorsey, Ed Blades, and our entire Office of Budget and Finance for your exceptional work. We are a large county with a complex budget. Your work is acknowledged year after year by your peers nationally. I want to add my personal thanks and respect for the work that you do. Our Baltimore County department heads, deputy directors, my executive staff and senior staff, each of them bring a special commitment to their work, their boundless energy and enthusiasm and dedication to making our county a better place to live is without parallel. The saying goes, leave everything a little better than you found it. You've done that and a whole lot more. Thank you. So together, we've made tremendous progress toward an innovative, responsible, and efficient local government. Consider this, 16,000 new jobs have been added to the county since December 2010. There's been more than $5 billion in new private investment countywide. The county has invested $1.8 billion to modernize and maintain our aging water and sewer infrastructure plus another $129 million for roads and bridges. We deployed new technology that improves service to our citizens and achieves significant cost savings. Baltimore County, by the way, is now ranked fourth in the nation for the use of technology in government. Great thanks to Director Rob Stradling and the entire Office of Information Technology. And just to let you know, you have seven more months to get to number one. <laughs> and of course, as we all know, we've made an historic $1.3 billion investment to upgrade and modernize our schools. County government has a special responsibility to ensure that our schools are also safe and secure. We've all been shattered and heartbroken by shootings in schools around the country and too close to home right here in Maryland and even Baltimore County. School safety is not an afterthought to us here. After our incident in 2012, we invested $13.6 million to reinforce all school doors and windows, adding security cameras and controlled entry, and adding SROs in every middle and every high school. Now, five years later, with this budget, we strengthen our system internally by adding more professionals to help identify mental health issues that can lead to suicide and destructive behaviors in our Baltimore County Public Schools. If adopted, the budget would add 22 social workers, 23 counselors, 18 school psychologists, additional pupil personnel workers, health assistants, even bus attendants. 19 more police school resource officers would be funded, increasing the county's total to 84 officers. We are proud of Team BCPS, as we finally call our school system. 
they have one of the highest graduation rates in the state and there is no disparity in the graduation rates between African American and white students in this county. Our schools have earned national honors in music and art education, digital learning, robotics, and more. Our dedicated educators are fully committed to nurturing that next class, that next great class of creative thinkers. And that's why, among other things, we have increased teacher salaries by 12% over the last four years. Thank you, Superintendent White and all of Team BCPS for all you do. <laughs> schools for Our Future continues to be a groundbreaking capital program to modernize our schools, but not just for today, but to meet future enrollment needs as our population continues to grow, building or rebuilding more than 90 schools. 51% of our total Baltimore County operating budget is dedicated to our schools. That's more than $1.67 billion. Why is education our number one priority? Students are learning skills that prepare them to adapt to new technologies and ways of solving problems that we can't even imagine. It's our obligation to make sure all of our children learn the skills they need to get good jobs and thrive. Today, that means more than just a K-12 education. College opens up a lifetime of career opportunities, but the cost can mean a dead end even for the most motivated of students. That's why we are launching Baltimore County College Promise. The program provides full tuition and fees for students who have demonstrated in high school that they are college ready and allows them to complete an associate's degree or even a workplace certification at the Community College of Baltimore County, free full tuition and fees after all loans. Folks, this is a real game changer for students from low or moderate income families. Since we announced College Promise just last month, CCBC, in fact, has received more than 700 inquiries. And today's budget includes $979,000 for the first year of Baltimore County College Promise, funding that will make college a reality for more than 1,100 students. This, this is a promise that will transform lives and, and make a vital investment in our future. So thank you, President Sandra Curtinitis and all of CCBC. We're so proud of you. Workforce development and economic development together drive our prosperity. With low unemployment and a tight job market, companies are ready to hire today. But chronic shortages of qualified workers remain in many high demand fields, such as healthcare, corporate operations, and customer service. Companies tell us that they need flexible, rapid response training so that a pipeline of qualified workers are ready to fill the jobs of today and tomorrow. We listen to our employers, and through the leadership of Director Will Anderson and our Department of Economic and Workforce Development, we are launching Job Connector an innovative $2.5 million program that brings a supply and demand strategy to workforce development. 
Job Connector partners with employers, labor unions, colleges, and universities to build a job-ready workforce. This employer-driven thinking helped us win competitive searches that are keeping large employers and their jobs here in the county. Our competitors were not just locations in the region and the state, but locations all around the country. Stanley Black & Decker is adding 400 jobs here, expanding their footprint to White Marsh Middle River. While this... <laughs> all right, David, this is for you too. <laughs> While this Fortune 500 company's Global Tools headquarters remains strong in Towson. <laughs> Care First Blue Cross is keeping 2,200 jobs here in the heart of Owings Mills. This company can locate anywhere in the world. And yet, one-fifth of McCormick's worldwide workforce, some 2,000 employees, will continue to work here in Baltimore County. And this summer, 900 corporate employees will be moving to a new global headquarters in Hunt Valley. And right next door to McCormick, Bank of America is adding 900 jobs. 300 hired last year, and 600 more jobs on the way. These marquee firms chose to stay in Baltimore County because we've created a welcoming business climate with a superb workforce and a responsive local government. And it's not just all about large businesses. The Baltimore County Boost Fund has loaned $4.3 million to small businesses in just four years, with a focus on firms owned by minorities, women, and veterans. We see transformative investment happening all around the county, including over $5 billion of private investment since 2011. Trade Point Atlantic, the massive redevelopment of Sparrows Point is already attracting name brands such as Under Armour, FedEx, and Amazon to Baltimore County. And get this, there are more people working at the point today than when the steel mill closed in 2012. Businesses are projected to add 17,000 new jobs at TradePoint Atlantic when this global logistics hub is fully developed in 2025. That's just seven years from now. Downtown Towson has 3,500 new apartments and townhomes built or on the horizon with fresh new entertainment, shops, restaurants, and green spaces, creating a more livable, walkable county seat. Thank you, resident cheerleader Nancy Hafford. <laughs> and Towson resident. Maryland Route 43 was expanded and extended to open land already zoned for business development. We built it and they came, bringing more than 3,000 jobs to Middle River. <laughs> Just a little name dropping, BGE Home, Mary Sue, and Breakthrough Beverage, joining Stanley Black & Decker at Greenlee at Crossroads, our exciting new development. The centerpiece of Owings Mills, the Metro Center, is the region's only transit-oriented development, now bustling with shops, restaurants, apartments, office space, a community college, and a public library branch. The Foundry Row Lifestyle Center was built on the site of a closed factory. Mill Station, a new retail center, is literally rising where the virtually vacant Owings Mills Mall once stood.
Even Newtown High School is getting into the act with a new turf field and a brand new stadium. <laughs> Principal James Martin, Athletic Director Reggie Brooks, Councilman Jones, thank you all for your advocacy. This is the face of economic development throughout the county, that it's transforming job prospects and economic development opportunity, but also a positive attitude for the entire region. But in a time of overall prosperity, there are still too many who struggle to make ends meet. The true measure of a government is how we treat those who could use an outstretched hand to get by. More than 98,000 people in Baltimore County are food insecure, including 30,000 children. Our proposed budget includes $550,000 to support the Maryland Food Bank, a 10% increase. Their food pantry program serves 23 county schools connecting children and their family with nutritious food throughout the school year. The county has expanded services to people who also experience homelessness. Three years ago, we opened a comprehensive West Side Men's Shelter, replacing trailers. A new Eastern Family Resource Center opened last fall with expanded health services, shelter beds for men and women, and resources for people in need. Women and children who need shelter are often victims of domestic violence and need a safe place to stay for weeks before they secure permanent housing. And this new Eastern Family Resource Center doubles the number of those traditional housing beds. And next year's budget increases funding for all shelter services by 5%. We continue to empower older adults and people with disabilities to help them remain independent in the community. Our Department of Aging served over 1 million meals to seniors and guided more than 36,000 people to navigate Medicare benefits over the last five years. We've proven that good public policy can also make a difference in good public health. We even responded to escalating calls about rats infesting some of our neighborhoods. After this year's successful pilot in 13 neighborhoods, we are adding 12 more neighborhoods and $1.8 million to our rat eradication program. <laughs> By reducing access to tobacco, we can break a deadly habit before it begins. Through aggressive enforcement, it is now much harder for underage kids to buy tobacco in Baltimore County. Listen to this. 50% of county retailers sold tobacco to minors in 2014. 50%. Today, it's just 6%. It's not easy to control all addictive substances, and opioid deaths killed 543 Baltimore County residents from 2016 through the first nine months of 2017. We can save lives with naloxone, which reverses the effects of an opioid overdose, and the county has launched an aggressive program to make naloxone widely available. Our Department of Health and Human Services has already trained 3,200 residents on how to safely administer this life-saving drug, in addition to all of our first responders. We're also fighting the opioid epidemic head-on, working through the legal system to hold drug manufacturers more accountable. Of course, Baltimore County is not immune to the challenges that come with drugs and juvenile crime. And our police officers understand that keeping the public safe requires community cooperation 
and mutual respect. That's why we launched Operation Connect, focusing outreach by our police officers to local communities, particularly to our youth. Now our police, firefighters, and paramedics also undergo rigorous training with a renewed focus on mental health. Our Department of Health implemented a new program to assist individuals with mental illness who are incarcerated in the county detention center. The program coordinates inmate mental health services with re-entry services and follow-up care. So there's a continued support system when they do return to the community. Our police officers are now equipped with the tools and the resources to support their work. 1,400 of our police officers have been fully trained and now wear body cameras. <laughs> Computers in every police car provide information more quickly and reliably, including real-time access to video from our security cameras at all of our schools libraries, and other public facilities, 24-7. And Baltimore County continues to be a very safe place to live. Now, since the beginning of 2018, there were five homicides in Baltimore County. But that is down from 13 over the same period last year. And the early overall statistics for 2018 give us reason to be optimistic that crimes of all types will continue to decline in our county. Our volunteer and career firefighters and paramedics are truly dedicated to our safety as well. This budget increases funding for volunteer fire companies by 7.4%, bringing our support to 9.8 million next year. We are grateful to our police, fire, paramedics, the men and women who answer the call. We're also grateful for the sacrifices their families make so our responders can do this vital work. Please join me in thanking our entire public safety community. It takes sound policy to preserve our land and water resources and protect our county's 200 miles of Chesapeake Bay waterfront and our 2,000 miles of streams and tributaries. Baltimore County began implementing smart growth 50 years ago with the creation of the urban-rural demarcation line. Only us would know what Ertl means, right? <laughs> Our planning, zoning, and development decisions are firmly grounded in this core principle. 90% of our population live on 30% of the land. Baltimore County has already placed 65,000 acres of land in conservation. That's open space that can never be developed. These smart decisions, however, don't mean that we're built out. It means that we need 21st century places to live and work. But instead of extending public water and sewer through rural green fields, we approve dense development and redevelopment in our more urban areas, such as downtown Towson, White Marsh, Owings Mills, and even Sparrows Point. We protect the bay through our Clean Green County initiative, restoring stream banks and shorelines, planting trees, and even sweeping streets. Four years ago, we opened a 
new single stream recycling center to keep materials out of, out of our landfills. And sales of recycled materials has already brought the county over $30 million in revenue. The county has met its commitment and invested $1.8 billion over the last eight years to modernize and maintain our aging water and sewer systems. And our proposed budget for next year includes nearly $27 million to maintain and improve water and sewer infrastructure and reduce water main breaks and sewage spills. More than 200 county parks offer green spaces and recreation places, from trails at Marshy Point to new athletic fields at Spring Grove Park in Catonsville. The county has funded a record $68 million in new parks, community centers, and turf fields since 2010. We were especially proud to support the Perry Hall Rec Council volunteers who built Angel Park. From fundraising to sweat equity, these volunteers built the county's largest all-inclusive playground to accommodate children with special needs. It's truly uplifting to visit this barrier-free park. The arts also bind our communities together, opening minds and building our creative class. Next year's budget will include $3.9 million to support arts, humanities, and cultural institu institutions both in Baltimore County and our entire region. Our animal friends have a new healthy place to stay as they wait for their forever homes. When I came into office, our animal shelter was, to be honest, not safe for man, woman, or beast. Today, we have a $7 million state-of-the-art shelter in Baldwin, plus a spay-neuter program at, a, at new surgical sites all across the county. Our adoption rates are at an all-time high. We regularly achieve 90% live release rates for dogs and for cats. It's among the highest rates in the nation. A new cuddle shuttle van goes on the road, making it easier to adopt a pet on the spot. And to assure pet owners are responsible, next year's budget includes funding for a new animal cruelty investigation unit centered in our police department. Now, good government needs good governance. This administration has been fiscally conservative, consistently earning Baltimore County the coveted triple, triple A rating, which is the best credit rating from all three bond rating agencies. Only 46 counties across the country can say this. With our stellar credit rating, we borrow at the lowest interest rates saving millions in interest costs. It's the responsible way to run government. But leaders have to prioritize and make tough decisions. We've streamlined county government, eliminating red tape, and deployed technology to help us do our jobs more effectively and also cost efficiently. I wish we could upgrade every playing field, repave every road, and build new schools in every part of the county all at once. But at the end of the day, we have to balance our checkbook. 
Mr. Chairman and members of the council, the fiscal year 2019 budget we are submitting once again does not raise the property tax rate or the income tax rate. This budget also stays within spending affordability limits and importantly funds our schools above maintenance of effort level. This is money well spent for educating our children, keeping our communities healthy and safe, maintaining our infrastructure and preserving our land and water resources. Now I'd like to take a moment to share a personal story with you. My dad was a pharmacist and he ran a neighborhood pharmacy in Overly. He was known as Doc K of K's Pharmacy. As the youngest of five kids, we all worked in the drugstore throughout our childhood. And I worked in the drugstore from the moment I was tall enough to reach the cash register all through college and law school. I learned valuable lessons about business sense and common sense, but also learned what it was like to walk in someone else's shoes. Years later, many years later, when I was first elected to the county council, I met an area school superintendent by the name of Evelyn Chapman. I learned that Evelyn lived near my dad's store at a time when African Americans were feeling the daily sting of Jim Crow. Back then, stores still, re still refused service to people of color. But Evelyn told me, her community knew Doc K would not only fill their prescriptions, but treat each person with dignity and respect. In his quiet way, Dad demonstrated the equal worth of everyone, and through example, passed his values to my brothers, my sisters, and me. I hope that Jill and I are passing these same values on to our two sons. Evelyn Chapman, thank you for being here today and for representing the best of Baltimore County. Baltimore County is much more diverse than when I was growing up in Lockhearn in the 60s. Today, four out of 10 Baltimore County residents identify as black, Hispanic, Asian, or biracial. 6,000 public school students do not speak English as their primary language. Early in my administration, we made a commitment to diversify our public safety ranks, and I'm especially proud of the progress we've made. Our last police academy class was 40% women or minority. The class of EMTs and paramedics that graduated last month is 60% women or minority. The fire recruit class now in session, 67%. Our Baltimore County Fire Department is rec recognized nationally as a leader in promoting gender diversity, with women now making up almost one quarter of our sworn members. The national average, just 4%. Last year, Assistant Fire Chief Jennifer Albert Utz became the highest ranking woman in the history of the Baltimore County Fire Department. And at her promotion ceremony, she stated, I just hope I can inspire other young women to pursue careers in community service. 
Jen, thank you for being an inspiration. As a civil and moral society, we must acknowledge and respect everyone who lives here. In 2017, as a result of our executive order, county employees, including police, may not ask a person's immigration status. Three years ago, before Charlottesville, we removed a symbol of hate from our community, renaming Robert E. Lee Park to Lake Roland. In 2012, I proudly signed legislation that added gender identity and sexual orientation to the county's existing anti-discrimination laws. I applaud Councilman Quirk and the council for their leadership on that legislation. Over the years, <clears throat> I've listened and I've learned that there are limits to what government can do and should do. I've also learned that responsible, responsive local government can get things done for the people it serves. <clears throat> Together, we've improved our schools, we've made our streets safer, we've created jobs, we've protected the environments, all without raising tax rates. Moving forward, Baltimore County government will continue to support what is important to the people who live, work, and learn here. I just want to say again, thank you for all of your support over the past eight years and for the 24 years of opportunity to serve our county. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, again, I'm Council Chairman Julian Jones, and I want to thank everyone for coming today. We certainly appreciate the 24 years of service your Honorable Kevin Kaminis has provided to the citizens of Baltimore County. The County Council will hold a public hearing on the Executive's proposed budget on Tuesday, May the 1st at 6 p.m. in this room. The Council will re begin its review of individual, individual agency budgets on Thursday, May the 3rd at 2 p.m. These hearings will continue through May the 17th. The entire schedule of the hearings is posted on the County's Council's website the budget adoption is tentatively scheduled for Thursday, May the 24th at 10 a.m. I want to thank you all for coming and have yourself a wonderful day. <clears throat>